crypto hackers are back with a vengeance. In the last two weeks, about $718 million have been stolen in a number of exploits across DeFi protocols. According to Chainalysis data, 2022 is likely to outpace last year's record in terms of stolen crypto funds. But how can we make sense of these numbers? Is the crypto industry becoming less secure? And what can be done about it? We talked about all that with Kim Grauer, Director of Research at Chainalysis. Before we get started, consider leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. I'm Giovanni, your host. Welcome to another Cointelegraph interview. According to Chainalysis data, October this year was uh, probably the worst, crypt the worst month for crypto hacks. Uh, we are talking about 11 hacks and $718 million stolen. And we are just a half away through the month. So how do we make sense of these numbers? We follow a lot of cryptocurrency crime related trends. And right now, hacking is certainly the, the biggest issue that we're thinking about that's happening in the industry that's a real threat to security. And the way you would think about this is that last year, we knew that 2021 was the year that DeFi hacking really started to ramp up. And we kind of started to think that, hey, the industry can't, this can't go on in the industry because people are really going to lose faith in investing their funds in DeFi platforms. And so we predicted that this is probably not going to last in the medium term. But the fact that we're at the, in October of 2022 and we're at the highest month ever, I think really shows that this has not started to ramp down yet. We're, st we're not out of the woods yet in terms of, of getting around the cybersecurity issues implicit with some having so much data and um, having so many contracts and the way they're run be managed through open source software. Yeah, it's very surprising because according to your data, 2021 is going to be surpassed this year in terms of uh, amount of crypto stolen through exploits. Um, so that is concerning because last year we had a, a bull market. This year it was a, a bear market and we are still in a bear market. And so logically you would expect also uh, hacks and exploits to go down. But uh, on, the other, on, the, on the contrary, it seems that 2022 is going to be a bigger year for crypto exploits. So how do you explain this trend? I would probably disagree with the with the premise of the question that because we are in a bull market or a bear market, hacking would go down. There is certainly a connection between market trends and criminal activity, but many different, but only in some types of crime. So we've identified that scamming, for example, goes down when you're in a bear market because people are investing less, so they're investing in fewer scams. But there are certain types of crime where it doesn't really matter what the price of Bitcoin is, it's still going to happen. Ransomware, darknet market activity, hacking. Hackers aren't more likely to hack if the price is really high. I mean, of course, there are some, um, as the price gets higher, maybe people will get more enticed into getting into hacking because of how much money they perceive there to be. But a lot of these hacking organizations are, especially of DeFi platforms, this is carried out many mainly by North Korean hacking groups. So they're not this is just what they do every day. And so they're going to carry out these hacks no matter the price of Bitcoin. Okay, that's interesting. You mentioned North Korean hacks. How relevant is their activity in the um, like big, big numbers that you uh, pointed out? The last time we crunched the numbers, they were probably a little bit over 60% of all value hacked went to North Korea. This is billions of dollars going to North Korean hacking organizations which means that they're one of the biggest threats in the industry and they carry out some of the biggest um, hacks in terms of value stolen. They are have been around for many years. We've been following, Chainalysis has done a really good job of profiling them over the past five, six, seven years and seeing how they've evolved as a hacking organization. And this year in particular, we've seen a massive amount of increased hacking from North Korean hacking organizations that pretty much surpasses where we were at in previous years, if only because the value stolen in each of these hacks is so much higher than in the past. Another trend that we need to point out is that the majority of these hacks are uh, targeting DeFi uh, protocols, so the realm of decentralized finance. 
Um, on the other hand, we saw, according to the data that you gathered, that centralized exchanges have minimized the, the uh, level of uh, hacks and exploits. Historically, we touched uh, some, I think, the historical minimum. Is this trend a signal that centralized exchanges have improved uh, significantly their security mechanisms or is it just because more money is flowing into DeFi and, and so it, it's becoming more attractive for hackers? I would say it's definitely the former. Centralized exchanges were... We were in this position with centralized exchanges a few years ago. If you look at some of the charts that we've been putting out lately, and up and up through 2019, a majority of the hack hacked value came from centralized exchanges. These were new exchanges that had a lot of security vulnerabilities that people took part of, mostly through phishing. But over the years, we've raised so much awareness around the threat of hacking with centralized exchanges that we've seen major improvements in how centralized exchanges are handling their funds and prioritizing cybersecurity. So we've really done a good job of improving security in, in centralized exchanges. And I'd, I can't emphasize enough, it really was a talking point a few years ago that this is an insurmountable problem for centralized exchanges. All of the hacking that's coming, coming, no one's going to trust the industry. But now we have moved on beyond that that narrative, and now we're in a narrative where this is a systemic risk to DeFi. How are we going to get over this? This is insurmountable. Everyone's hacked, and so we need to, as an industry, evolve and grow to to prioritize cybersecurity in DeFi. Be, when we saw so much growth starting in 2021 of DeFi platforms, so many new entrants were coming to the market. Anyone could spin up a smart contract that was managing you know, millions and millions of dollars. And maybe at the expense of growth, people did not prioritize cybersecurity or didn't care. And we're seeing the repercussions of those decisions now. It's also interesting to notice that one of the most common types of hacks are directed towards cross-chain bridges. So these bridges that connect one blockchain to another. Why are these points so vulnerable to hacks? It's a really good question. And bridges are an attractive target because they often feature a central storage point of funds that, are, that back the bridged assets. So there's kind of, I don't want to call it a honeypot, but something comparable to a honeypot where there is a large quantity of money that's sitting there that people can know that there's a large amount of money in one place that is a bridge. But there's also uh, effective bridge design is still pretty much an unresolved technical challenge that people are sorting out as we, as we evolve as an industry. So what does it mean to have a secure bridge you have to be secure on both blockchains you have to you have to surpass a level of security that's really that you can handle in just one blockchain because you're bridging to many different blockchains so there's just more points of vulnerability i think plus this perception that there's potentially a honey pot and this is brand new technology this has only emerged in the past kind of few years so we're, we're, we're sorting out these issues as they come along. What are the tools that the industry has at its disposal in order to retrieve uh, the funds once they get stolen through these exploits? So if you're hacked, then you would be able to follow the funds where they're going. Everything's available forever publicly on the blockchain. And so if you can follow the, where the funds are going and which off-ramps they're using, then you can know which exchanges have those funds and you have a shot at getting those funds frozen by the compliance teams of those exchanges and then getting those funds returned to you. But it's once they're kind of turned into fiat and moved off the platform, you've, you've missed your shot at getting those back purely through use through freezing the funds on the account, but you can still have a law enforcement investigation that, that might go follow the funds from there to try and figure out who the person is to try and get the funds seized again, which we've, we've seen that happen as well. From my impression, it seems that a lot of this comes down to the essence of DeFi. So having protocols that don't have a centralized authority that can basically block everything and kind of, uh, yeah, basically ensure security. Um, as you mentioned, centralized exchange managed to get a lot, improve, a lot of improvements on this side. 
But do you think that is it, it's possible to achieve the same through, uh, through DeFi? Is it not an intrinsic element of DeFi having this sort of vulnerabilities? I don't think it's an intrinsic element of DeFi. I think that what we, banks, financial institutions, your personal identity is in the world is always being threatened to be stolen or scammed or or hacked to some degree, not just in cryptocurrency. We see hackers are are present everywhere. The difference with DeFi from centralized exchanges is there's an additional attack vector that, that hackers can carry out. So with centralized exchanges, the main breach is a uh, probably a phishing campaign. That's what we've seen happen of centralized exchanges. But also, you we've seen centralized exchanges. We see businesses all around suffer vulnerabilities from ransomware that are also delivered through either malwares or clicking on the wrong link or other phishing links. So with DeFi, you also have the problem of open source code, which means anyone can parse over this open source code and look for code vulnerabilities that they can exploit. That doesn't, that's not an intrinsic problem. There are people who have, there are contracts that have proven that they can can remain secure and you're going to be attacked from any dire- any direction no matter what but once we nail cybersecurity in defi i think that we're positioned as a as an industry to be far more secure because you have everything is is in the code. If you get the code right, then you might actually not have some of these other sources of vulnerability. Maybe phishing won't be as as prominent. And so you have the potential to create something really secure that goes that that has the potential to be even more secure than what we're seeing around around the world already, but we just have to get there and make sure that the code that is managing these protocols is is perfect and, and it's going to take it's probably going to take a little bit longer to get there kim that was a super interesting conversation thanks a lot for coming on our show thank you so much it was great to catch up 